of some Postgres cluster on Kubernetes. So, a few words about me. I spend a lot of time uh, chasing to achieve 100% uh, availability. <laughs> but uh, now I built uh, an observability tool that uh, try to turn telemetry data into answers. What, into answers uh, what's happening right now in your infrastructure and how to fix uh, issues to make it available again. Um, so, as you know, uh, any database is a crucial part of any infrastructure. So that's why uh, we should care a lot about availability, about disaster recovery, back, backing up, it's upgrading, and, and so on. So uh, it can be done in many ways in a, in a company like growing uh, your internal uh, DBA team or maybe hire an external DBA team. But the most popular case these days is to, for small and medium business is to use uh, database as a service offerings like Amazon, RGS, or Google Cloud SQL. And it's pretty useful solutions, but uh, there is a thing, vendor lock-in. So, and business uh, doesn't like uh, vendor lock-in because, uh, because uh, of, you know, ownership of the data and maybe uh, to be able to migrate your data between clouds and so on. So, and what if we need to, we want to build something like uh, cloud managed databases, but without this vendor lock-in? So, in, from my perspective, it should be an open source solution, uh, because only in this way it it, should, it can eliminate vendor lock-in. So it it have to contain a lot of automation to to provide us with the same level of service like Amazon or DS does. So, and Kubernetes here is a game changer in meaning that can bring us a uh, unified API to be able to manage infrastructure by, by the cloud. Uh, so, uh, previous speakers, uh, told us a lot about operators, so I, I don't see any need to repeat it again and again. Um, so in, from my point of view, uh, operators uh, on Kubernetes can give us the same level of automation, the same level of uh, Reliability comparing to cloud uh, cloud managed database offerings. So, and in this talk, I I want to talk about uh, availability and in like because no uh, Kubernetes operator for managing databases can guarantee 100% availability. So let's let's see. Uh, and I would use uh, my lab. So uh, it's a small Kubernetes cluster and a Postgres cluster deployed uh, on it. Uh, I, I used a Postgres operator by Zalando. I, would use, I, I will use uh, Chaos Mesh uh, for failure injection. So, and I use uh, Karoot and its agents for observability. And let's start. So the first failure scenario is uh, um, isolating one of replicas. So we have uh, application, an application that works both with primary and, and replicas. So let's see uh, how... I, I just uh, put there... Um, a specification of Chaos Mesh to maybe you you will want to introduce uh, to reproduce it, uh, but I have a recordings of this failure scenario. Here we have 
an application and database cluster, one of them is primary, GB2 is primary and two replicas. So they, they work with a Cube API server as a distributed configuration store. So uh, this chart is a response time histogram of the application app that used database as a primary storage. And this is a just status of each uh, container in the cluster. So let's see. Here, let's wait for dance. So here we have uh, one of uh, containers goes down. Uh, we can see that this is a DB main, DB main zero, and as we can see here, there are a lot of errors because of uh, the, the application cannot uh, connect to, to that replica. And as we can see, downtime lasted uh, around 30 seconds. So what's happened here? Um, each uh, container of Postgres is managed by Patroni. This is a tool uh, also developed by Zalando company, and it maintains each instance and a literal action, and it, it in it, it's in charge uh, of literal action here. But here we uh, fancied only one replica, so uh, we, we had uh, a lot of errors, but the outage lasted 30 seconds because, because um, after that, Kubernetes handled the situation and removed uh, this replica from load balancing. So the, the, most, the more complicated case, uh, when we uh, will isolate the primary instance. So let's do it and see what's happened. It's the same, same uh, infrastructure, same environment. What's happened here? Here, uh, one of instance goes down. It's a um, previous uh, primary instance, and we can see that now primary uh, cluster elected new the new primary uh, instance here. So there are a lot of errors because of this. So an outage lasted 27 seconds. So what's happened here? Patroni um, acquires a lock in upper server for electing leader for 30 seconds. So it must uh, refresh its logs uh, in, in every, every 30 seconds. So uh, when we uh, fenced the primary, uh, it, 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 it took uh, near 30 seconds to determine that our primary is not available. Uh, so new leader election took a few seconds after the, the cluster detected that uh, the previous leader is not available. Uh, in this scenario, I want to isolate one replica only from um, master. So we fence not um, not whole uh, replica, but we, we just only cut connection uh, between replica and, and the primary. So let's see. As you can see, uh, repl replication lag uh, started growing, but uh, our, our application fe feels bad right now because a lot of error, errors. So what's happened here? Um, I added a freshness check into my uh, test application just for uh, showing that uh, the data uh, between, uh, has, has a gap between updating data uh, on the primary and, uh, and on the replica. So, and Patroni's uh, health check used by the Postgres operator readiness uh, doesn't check uh, the lag between uh, 
between the primary and the replica, and that's why the Postgres operator cannot handle the situation uh, automatically. So the next one, I added connection puller um, for uh, primary instance. So let's see what, what if we uh, isolate one puller from, from the, the Postgres itself. So let's run. We can see a lot of errors again. And from application's point of view, we have a lot of errors uh, unable to connect. Uh, and uh, such, such a scenario cannot also be uh, handled automatically because uh, health check that Kubernetes check availability of PG bouncer in this case uh, um, is not checking a uh, connection between PG bouncer and Postgres. So, but as you as you know, this uh, you know a complex network partitioning uh, has very few chances to occur in real life. So, and one bonus track, we will upgrade, may, we will perform major upgrade of Postgres cluster uh, just uh, under the load. So, and before we, 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 we replay this scenario, few, few main uh, steps, uh, how operator performs major upgrades. Uh, initially, um, the operator initiates uh, rolling update uh, means uh, every container should be restarted to to change desired the desired Postgres version, and upgrade itself uh, is not is not started yet. So then, uh, when uh, operator upgrade uh, change the desired state on, on the replicas, uh, it initiates uh, a switchover, which means uh, planned. Uh, failover, to, so uh, it uh, promote one of the replica uh, to to primary. So and then uh, we will have a total downtime of the cluster during the upgrade. So let's see. As you can see here, cluster has uh, 13.7 version of Postgres. Let's start and see. First replica is done. The second one, switch over. And upgrade has started. That's it. First replica, the second one, switch over, and then it's upgrade itself. And now the version Wait, wait, wait. The version is 14.4. Uh, so as I uh, mentioned, the initial rolling update took uh, 10 seconds, and the downtime down uh, due to uh, upgrade itself took 22 seconds. So, uh, but in, in my lab, it was a pretty small database. So uh, the, the actual duration of the downtime depends on uh, disk, disk performance, network throughput, and database size. So that's it. But we, now we can understand the behavior of the operator in uh, such uh, failure scenarios. So some takeaways, as I can see here. Uh, Kubernetes operators uh, can be considered as a, a real alternative to manage databases by cloud vendors and so on. Uh, it's really good to see what behavior of the managing software you can expect before uh, running it in production. And chaos testing tools are pretty useful here. Uh, 
Also, distributed database are pretty complicated. So we need to, and is, as you can, as you could see, uh, there are a lot of uh, possible scenarios where um, uh, automation provided by the operators cannot uh, be handled by them. So, and if you want to improve visibility of your system, you can try Karoot. It's uh, really easy to install and free and open source, truly open source license, Apache 2. So, thank you. <laughs> if you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, I want to ask, uh, can I use Karoot for other applications such as MongoDB or uh, MySQL, for example? Yeah, we, you will see uh, basic resource uh, metrics, uh, network metrics like uh, network latency, but we, uh, we don't provide you with uh, MongoDB specific metrics yet. And, only Postgres and Redis, and but um, without such instrumentation, um, it will be very, very helpful because, for example, our agent can parse, um, can parse uh, logs right on the node and provide you with uh, uh, extract extract uh, repeated patterns from your log. So it it can be helpful uh, without this instrumentation. Thank you. And you showed the demo, and in the demo I saw that you get the data almost every second? Yeah. So it's like uh, default for Corroot that it gets the data metrics? It depends on, uh, Corroot uses Prometheus for storing oh, okay. metrics, so you can choose any script interval you want. So Corroot can proceed from one second resolution to Okay, so Corroot kind of depends on what I have in Prometheus. Yeah. So it doesn't, okay, got it, thank you. <laughs>